settle in, put some comfortable clothes on, throw your hair up in a bun. We're talking old memories. <laughs> One of the first friend ever videos, I believe is actually the second one, I talked about keeping track of your memories that you make over the years. Trust me, you will not regret it. I've never been much of a journaler, but when something funny happens, the first thing I do is whip out my phone, take a photo of it, take a video of it, or write it down because honestly, there's some stuff that I just don't want to forget. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about some of our favorite memories. You might get a kick out of it, you might not. If there's any one particular one that stands out to you, please comment down below. These stories, I probably can't even do them justice retelling them in this way, but honestly, they're just hilarious. Let's kick it off with the most recent one. Just a couple weeks ago, my friend group and I were going to dinner after we hadn't seen each other in a while, and we got off the freeway, we're going to a restaurant, we're driving down we hit a street and we suddenly find ourselves in the most interesting looking car show you've ever seen it's not your traditional car show of like super super fancy cars or super super old cars these were like jacked up cars that were like like spinning around in two wheels and very interesting we somehow ended up in the middle of it i drive a ford fusion and so my ford fusion on four wheels is next to this car that's jacked up on two wheels and doing and i'm just like oh help us help us help us that was just not that long ago if i rear in one of these guys we're all going to jail was like two weeks ago. One time we got tickets to see a play that had a very surprising ending that was quite, I wouldn't say inappropriate, but it took us quite by surprise. And there were some people that we knew sitting two rows over that were really enjoying it. So that was an interesting time. One time we went to a restaurant that my friends frequent very often and they had changed their menu and they had raised their prices significantly and we're like ah you know how you complain when your favorite restaurant jacks up the prices we're like rah, 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 whatever so one of my friends gets her regular order and she orders it like she likes it the bill comes out not only was the price a lot higher they had charged her two extra dollars for egg and in the moment that was just too much for her to handle and she still talks about those extra two dollars of eggs to this day the amount of times that we have seen videos and like recreated them to our liking Okay, we're 20, I'm 25, and we've been friends since I was 16, 17. So we're not like 12 years old doing this stuff. We are well into our adult years. You might sit there and ask Daniel, why am I even watching this video? What does this have to do with being a friend? What does it have to do with the endeavor of friendship? My friends, there is no age limit on having fun. One time we took my friend to Michigan, where we used to live, to my grandparents' house, and my grandparents have a ventriloquist doll in their closet. In the hallway i don't know why they have it it is there and always for some reason that closet is open just a little bit and you can see that doll just sitting in the closet so my friend goes up we're going to our room and i'm like hey look at that and she's like oh my goodness that is so creepy looking right so she and i go into one room my sister goes into another room we had been talking whatever saying other night and suddenly and suddenly we hear this creaking and we were con convinced that my sister had gotten that doll is gonna fling open our door and scare us to death so we're getting ourselves all worked up okay it's the middle of the night there's creaking floorboards the house is like 200 years old and we're just like oh we're working ourselves up oh how could she do this to us like we're getting worked up so we're like you know what that's it we are not letting her do this so we fling it open our door we run down the hallway throw open the door in her room and we like jump on her and like ah, you can't scare us she is sound asleep turns out she hadn't had that planned and we nearly gave her a heart attack uh because we had just worked ourselves up for no reason to be fair that doll was very creepy and that is something that she would do one time we were going to this campground to stay in a covered wagon i can't even explain why that was something we were gonna do but let me tell you we were gung ho about it so we get there it's november it is up in a mountain and we get there and they're like yeah you will literally freeze to death if you stay in this covered wagon so we're like oh drats well i said oh drats everyone else was like, yeah, we can. We can. 
So they gave us a cabin and upgrade complimentary because they're like, we don't want you to freeze to death on our property. The next day it happened to be Sunday and we see a flyer out. There's no one there, okay? There's like 10 other people there on the campground because people don't typically go camping in the mountains in November in Santa Barbara. We're coming out of the bathroom and we see a flyer for a chapel service on the campground and Kara's like, purely for the experience. We go to this chapel service and it was one of the most interesting experiences we've ever had. And it certainly bonded us together. At the end of it, the guy, the reverend or whatever, he was the guy in charge, had his wife pray over all of us while he stood there with the Spock blessing. He called it the Spock blessing, extended out over us while his wife prayed. That is as true of a story as you get. All of these are true, but that one in particular stands out very vividly in my mind. One time our two friends stayed the night and my sister was being the proper hostess and she was gonna make them breakfast in the morning, just so kind of the goodness of her heart. And we woke up to pancakes the size of hubcaps. I guess it's the thought that counts. Of course, there's that classic story that I shared in a couple videos, but it's so good. We can't just not do it again. We went to Tahoe and there was this old casino area that had a random pit that genuinely looked like they had done sacrifices in it. So, you know, just being the proper young ladies we are, we climbed down in there and explored. While we're down there, we're goofing around, doing a dance, whatever, we get out and Abby starts to get out on her own. I hold my hand out for her, she does not take it and this happens. Okay, no. oh. <laughs> second time I've shown this video on this channel but honestly I, if I could just upload that every week and get subscribers and have friend ever grow from that I would do it it's such gold there's a million and one other memories that I could share my whole point of sharing those is they're funny stories first of all second of all it really doesn't matter how your friend group starts we were well into our teen years when we found each other when God put us together and we didn't grow up together, we didn't have those pivotal childhood memories together, and yet we have grown. I now have the tightest bond with them that I've ever had with anybody. And you don't have to have this picture perfect relationship with people for them to be friends or for them to move up the friendship pyramid and be in your best friend tier. Because best friendship it does not just have to be one person. When you're young, it usually is, oh, she's my best friend, she's not my best friend, whatever. And then it switches. When you get older, you'll realize that people that you can count on, people that you can depend on, that is a tier of people that you could have many, many people in there as long as they fit that criteria. And if you have more than one person in that tier or more than two or three, you are so blessed. I've had a lot of people come up to me over the years and be like, you know, I wish I had what you guys had. They see what we do on social media. A lot of social media is just like fake or whatever. We try to put stuff on there that is real time, absolutely what's happening in our real life. You'll see some of these memories on my Instagram, my personal Instagram. and. It's really what's happening and we don't get ourselves in these situations but all that to say that people come up and say oh I wish I had what you had oh that's so incredible that two sets of sisters have that and yes we are so blessed and we, we recognize that we are truly blessed but we also realize that it's we could have let it fizzled out so many times at different points one of us has moved away or been away from each other or we've been in the four corners of the earth and we've still had to work to make this friendship happen. Abby moved to Rotan for a year. Lydia's moved to Lebanon for the, for the past three years. Karen went away for school for a couple years. She went to Norway for a summer. There, there's always been a point. It, it's almost like there's not been a point that we have not been spread abroad, but we're not gonna let that be the end of us. So yes, while we are incredibly blessed and we recognize that, you can have that too. You can have those kind of relationships too. It's just a matter of what will you, what are you willing to put in? To get it. If you're looking for certain trades, go back a few videos, look at what you're, see what everyone else is looking for. Try to be the best you that you can be. Look for people that are determined, that have got ambition, that are trustworthy, that are loyal, that are honest, 
that are dependable and try to see where that'll go build a relationship out of that i hope you found that this video interesting today i was just flipping through some memories and i'm like you know what the world needs to know if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel like this video don't forget friendship is a journey it's an endeavor i will see you next time on friend ever